Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Scale Modeling with Mike Ashey. This evening we're going to do another tutorial and I'm going to teach you how to paint a U.S. Navy Measure 32 Dazzle Pattern black and gray scheme on the Hobby Boss USS Alaska. As you can see, this came out pretty good. During the tutorial, I'm going to talk about the paints that I use, how I mix the paints, and how I mask the model in stages and in layers in order to achieve this beautiful finish. So, without further ado, let's get started. For my Alaska project, I used testers enamel paints. Stacks of balsa wood were attached to a wood base, and the hull was then set onto the balsa wood for the application of primer. For all my airbrushing, I like to use a Badger 200 airbrush and a CO2 tank for my air supply. I applied thin strips of masking tape around the raised superstructure positioning tabs so I wouldn't have to scrape the paint off later on. With the hull in main deck prime, it's now time to start applying the colors for the Measure 32 Dazzle Pattern Paint Scheme. Priming the surface provides you one last chance to check the seams to be sure everything looks good. And priming the plastic surface also provides an excellent layer from the finished paints to adhere to. The hull, the main deck splinter shields, and all the other vertical sides have been airbrushed with Tester's Flat Gold Gray, which is the base color for the hull. Two coats were applied using an air pressure of 15 PSI. For all my masking needs, I like to use 3M Painter's Red Label Masking Tape. I always place two layers of tape, one on top of the other, and I use a straight edge and a number 11 X-Acto blade to cut lengths of tape. And I always use the upper layer of tape for all my masking needs. The Alaska Hall has no line for the bootstripe like the Tamiya ship kits do. I measured and marked points along the armored belt one eighth inch above the bottom of the belt and then applied tape along this line. I then carefully applied a length from the aft end of the armored belt to the stern. I had to reset the tape several times until I got the masking tape straight. I then repeated the same procedure from the front of the armor belt to the bow. I checked and rechecked the tape line and had to make minor adjustments. It's important to get this line straight as it defines the whole red color and this is the line all the other colors key off of. I then turned the hull assembly over onto its wood base and masked the entire upper surface with lots of tape. Note how the tape is overlapped to prevent overspray and paint bleeding. I like to use flat red with some flat black added so that the resulting color is a dark blood red. The air pressure was set at 15 to 18 PSI and two coats were applied. With the tape removed, the red hull line was checked. The line was straight, so now it's time for the application of the black bootstripe. Masking tape was carefully applied along the edge of the hull red color. I decided that the height of the bootstripe would be an eighth of an inch. This dimension was marked onto a length of tape, and then sections were carefully cut out and applied along the hull butting the bottom of these small strips up against the red hull masking tape line. I then applied longer lengths of tape along the hull, butting the lower edges of this tape up against the upper edges of the short lengths of tape. The small lengths of tape were then carefully removed. The edges of the upper and lower tape lengths were checked to be sure they were flat against the hull. Larger sections of tape were then applied to cover the lower and upper surfaces. The exposed surface of the hull was then airbrushed with Tester's Flat Black. With all the masking tape removed, the bootstripe was checked and everything looked good. So now that the hull has its base color of flat gold gray, the hull red color, and the bootstripe, it's time to start masking for the dazzle pattern. Using the color sheet from the Hobby Boss kit, I created outlines for the dark gray color on the hull. The port side masking looks pretty good. And here's the starboard side masking. Note the masking tape line that covers the hull from the bootstripe down to some of the hull red color. Carefully check all the masking tape edges prior to airbrushing. 
With the whole assembly remounted on its wood base, lots of masking tape was applied to protect surfaces. Note the masking on all the vertical surfaces on the main deck. I mixed a few drops of flat white with flat black so the resulting color was a dark charcoal. This color was airbrushed onto the exposed surfaces of the hull at 12 psi. The airbrush tip was also positioned at a 90 degree angle to the hull to prevent the air pressure from lifting any of the tape edges. All the tape's been removed to check the dark charcoal color. All the color edges on the port side are sharp and clean. All the color edges on the starboard side also look good. With no touch-ups necessary, it's time to mask the entire hull. The entire hull was masked with lots of overlap sections of tape. All the small sections of masking tape around the main deck splinter shields were also checked to be sure they were still sticking to their surfaces. Here's a close-up of the masking tape application to the splinter shields. I made a mistake here which I needed to correct later on. Can you identify it? The entire deck surface was airbrushed with Tester's Euro Grey color with a few drops of flat white added to lighten it up. Be sure that the lighter Euro Grey color is a noticeably lighter shade than Euro Grey. The outlines of this lighter color were masked onto the main deck using thin strips of tape that would conform to the ray surfaces. These deck areas will be covered with small and large sections of tape. With the lighter Euro Grey areas masked, it's time to apply the Euro Grey color. Tester's Euro Grey was then airbrushed at 12 psi on all the exposed deck surfaces. With all the masking tape removed, the main deck colors look good and there are sharp demarcation lines between the lighter Euro Grey and its darker cousin. The superstructure subassemblies were airbrushed Euro Grey as their base color. Here I am checking the fit of these subassemblies and determining where the dark charcoal colors will be applied onto the superstructure sides. Here is where I realized my mistake. The inside areas of the deck splinter shields also needed to be flat gold gray, not Euro gray. So the deck surfaces inside the splinter shields were masked first. Note the tiny strips of masking tape and how they overlap one another. Small sections of tape were also applied around the outside perimeter of the splinter shields and then the entire surface was covered with tape. Flat gold gray was then airbrushed onto the inside surfaces of the splinter shields using an air pressure of 12 psi. The forward port side dark charcoal hull stripe needed to be made wider so that this color would carry up along the superstructure port side. I also masked the surfaces of the splinter shields that faced the outside so they would match the dark charcoal color. With all the masking tape removed, all the demarcation lines between colors were checked one last time. Note the small areas of dark charcoal on the sides of the splinter shields. Port side looks good. The starboard side also looks good. Now it's time to start working on the masking and airbrushing on the superstructure subassemblies. The forward superstructure subassembly was carefully masked for the lighter Euro Grey color. I judged that it would be easier to paint and mask the decks rather than paint the sides of the superstructure first and mask them and then airbrush the decks. There's a lot of surface details on the superstructure sides that would make masking difficult. The lighter Euro Grey color was carefully airbrushed at 12 psi. Note that the superstructure sides were also airbrushed this lighter color. With all the masking tape removed, the demarcation lines between the two colors look good. Now it's time for the really tedious part, masking the deck. 
Small strips of various sizes of masking tape were used to mask around the edges of the deck and then larger sections filled in the remaining exposed areas. Note how the masking tape edges slightly overhang the deck. The exposed surfaces were then airbrushed flat gold gray at 12 psi. Now additional masking tape was applied for the dark charcoal color. The positioning of the masking tape edges should match the locations of the dark charcoal color on the starboard side of the hull. Here again, the positioning of the masking tape edges should match the locations of the dark charcoal colors on the port side of the hull. The dark charcoal color airbrushing was done at 12 psi. And yes, there's a lot of masking tape layers to peel off. That's why I call this airbrushing process my paint layering technique. With all the tape removed, the colors look pretty good. There are four colors here, flat gold gray, light and euro gray, euro gray, and dark charcoal. The upper forward superstructure parts were also given a base coat of euro gray. The deck surfaces were then carefully masked. The upper superstructure parts were then airbrushed flat gold gray. Note the use of balsa wood strips to both attach and elevate the parts so that the undersides could also be airbrushed in the same session. Now the superstructure parts were further masked for the dark charcoal color. With all the tape removed, the parts look pretty good. Testing the color appearance of the parts is important for this type of dazzle pattern. The dark charcoal color should have the same edges as it works its way up along the sides of the superstructure. And testing the dark charcoal superstructure colors against the port and starboard hull sides is also very important. The aft superstructure subassemblies were also given a base coat of Euro Gray. The decks were then carefully masked. Note the different sizes of masking tape, and of course the assembly was elevated to be able to airbrush the undersides. With all the vertical surfaces airbrushed flat gold gray, it's time to start masking for the dark charcoal color. Here again, small sections of tape were used to outline the dark charcoal area, and then larger sections covered the remaining exposed surfaces. Both sides of the aft superstructure were masked so that the dark charcoal color could be applied in one airbrushing session. Here again, low pressure of 12 psi was used to airbrush the vertical superstructure sides the dark charcoal color. With all the tape removed, the port side of the superstructure looks pretty good. And the starboard side looks pretty good too. The smokestack was a bit tricky, so take your time masking it. The stack was airbrushed Euro Gray and then the decks were masked. All the exposed surfaces were then airbrushed flat gold gray. The smokestack was then carefully masked for the dark charcoal color. And the starboard side of the smokestack required a lot of small sections of masking tape. The smokestack looks pretty messy at this point. The dark charcoal color was airbrushed at 12 psi. And with all the masking tape removed, the smokestack looks pretty good. Some small areas got touch-up paint with a detail brush. The small aft superstructure parts were also airbrushed the same way. The old gray was applied to the horizontal surfaces, then flat gold gray, and then the dark charcoal color. All the aft superstructure parts look pretty good. The 12-inch turrets were airbrushed slightly different. 
I went from the lighter to the darker colors. I airbrushed flat gold gray first, then the lighter Euro gray, then Euro gray. The 5 inch 38 mounts were also airbrushed from the lighter colors to the darker colors. All the sub assemblies in the turrets were test fitted for color matching and they all looked good. I also test fitted the sub assemblies to one another and found that the tolerances were so tight that I had to scrape off some of the paint to get them to fit together. With all the parts of photo etch added, the Alaska looks really impressive with her Measure 32 Dazzle Pattern Paint Scheme. Note how sharp the demarcation lines are between the colors. The colors on the starboard side look just as sharp as on the port side. All the railings were airbrushed flat gold gray. The edges of the colors on the hull are very sharp and the color contrast looks really good too. Note how the dark charcoal color sweeps up along the top edges of the bootstripe and onto the port side superstructure. Good masking tape coupled with good masking technique, quality paints and careful airbrushing will always yield great results. Note how the lighter and darker Euro colors complement one another on the main deck surface. The Hobby Boss 1 to 350th scale USS Alaska is pretty impressive when completed. The starboard side looks really good too. Had Black Cat Models 3D printed parts been available when I built this kit, I would have used their Mark 37 radars, their 5 inch 38 mounts, and their 40 millimeter and 20 millimeter guns. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed this evening's tutorial. If you take your time and you follow my techniques, you're just about guaranteed a successful experience painting a measure 32 on any ship model. With that, don't forget to visit us at www.mikeashy.com. Happy scale modeling and be safe.